So we're here live today with Malcolm McAllister, up and coming young professional boxer with a pro record of 4 0, 4 KOs. Uh, my first question, man, do you have a nickname? Not yet. No. Not yet? All right. I figure I want to earn it. Okay, fair enough. Um, so, how long have you been boxing for, man? You know, tell me a little bit about, you know, your career and, you know, what made you want to get into the sport? Well, I, I started boxing when I was about 10 or 11 for my, one of those, I can't remember how old I was turning, but um, I just saw, I was saw I was a big Mike Tyson fan when I was a kid. So, Absolutely. I saw Mike Tyson on pe uh, TV knocking people out. And then uh, when I got old enough, my mom asked me what I want to do for my birthday and I told her to take me to the gym. That's and cool. it's been... And beloved ever since then. Absolutely. So, um, tell me a little about your amateur career. You know, um, if you can remember how many fights you had, and you know, if, if you can remember your record, I don't know. Depend. You probably had a lot of fights. I don't know. I had about, um, I say, mid forty to fifty fights, okay. and um, only three losses. Okay. Uh, I won the national Golden Gloves. I won the uh, Adidas National Pile, and uh, most of my fights are like local fights and stuff too. Okay. So did you do any other tournaments like the uh, any of the like the Olympic trials or oh, anything yeah, like that? Oh yeah, I did um, mm -hmm. the, one of the U.S. national tournaments uh, in Colorado. Okay. And this was I think it was one of the last chance qualifiers for the 2012 Olympic team. But mm -hmm. then um, I got the white part of my eye cut. Okay. So I, I wasn't able to finish the tournament. And then what uh, what weight class were you fighting in? I fought at like light heavyweight. Oh damn, really? Yeah. Well, because you know in the amateurs you got that ten pound um, weight like so light heavyweight is pretty much one sixty eight to one seventy eight. So I was walking. I, I the amateurs I didn't can, I didn't worry about cutting weight or anything because I just figured you know I just walk I just fight what I walk around and so right now that I'm professional you know. Making 160 isn't a big deal because I was walking around at like 168, 170. Okay. So I never had to really starve myself during the amateurs to fight. All right. And then, um, did you have a lot of knockouts in the amateurs? Yeah, I did. Uh -huh. um, you don't remember the number, do you? No, I don't remember the number, but I, I can tell you one thing. In the National Golden Gloves, I think I knocked out the first two or three opponents. Uh -huh. So. And it was, it's been like that for most tournaments. You know, I stop the first couple guys, and then the tournament goes on. Um, you know, you wear it down during the tournament, so. Yeah. You know, but local fights have stopped a lot of guys. And, yeah, so, I mean, it's just something that I'm good at doing. Right. <laughs> and what, what local fights, you know, like what area, like what, uh, what gyms or what venues have you fought at for local fights? Man. All I of them. can say damn near all of them in Southern California. Uh huh. You know, yeah. Okay. Um, I guess uh, coming up, you know, what what fighters inspired you the most? Coming up. Uh huh. And even now, you know, like to this day, what? Um. You know what? One of the fighters that did inspire me most was Shakur Robinson, because he, like, I don't know, back in the day, it was a lot easier for them to get fights, but the man had like 140 something fights, you know. Uh huh. Just to just to imagine being in training camp that much, because he's in training camp, he fights, he goes right back in, he takes another fight, or he might even fight two weeks later. So, okay, that type of hard work and dedication really got to me. Like, man, I like if he can do it, you know, I can do it. Right. And then, what about today? Anybody who you who you look up to that's you know currently fighting today or? Yeah, man. Um, I see Triple G just got his twentieth consecutive knockout. Yeah, that's definitely a goal of mine to not let nobody go the distance. Um, there's a lot of guys out there too that I, I've worked with and sparred with that you know I, I, I make sure I watch them closely. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, some of the guys and stuff like uh, Sergio Mora and I, I spar with Hassan and um, and Dom. Okay. Yeah. So oh, okay. And, um, and, um, mm -hmm a few other guys and you know I just always make sure like when I'm in a gym and I got a chance to watch these guys and see what they do and how they train and how hard they work I just make sure I do it you know? uh -huh. try uh -huh. to learn something from them all right all right and then uh, and then how long have you been training out of Jackrabbit Boxing Academy and what do you like about training over here the well, Jackrabbit is still fairly new I think it's been Jackrabbit for like maybe a year oh, okay but um 
maybe a little longer, but um, it was Long Beach boxing before that. And this building, this building, this gym has actually been here for a long time. It's just switched owners, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I can say the, the the man that turned it into Jack Rabbit, I think, is one of the he's done a great job with the place because before it looked like a garage right you know now it's like more of an actual gym yeah everybody it looks cool in here it's nice everybody comes in here they all work hard you know mm -hmm. everybody has goals to to do something to be something to push forward you know we got a big amateur team and all of them are you know trying to do something in national championships so i can say just all around the gym when you come in here you definitely get that boxing atmosphere right and then do you guys do like amateur fights in here as well mm -hmm. yeah that's cool I'll probably come and check one of those out sometime. Um, I guess you kind of answered this a little bit. I don't know if you wanted to elaborate on it. Being in Southern California, I know you have access to a lot of good gyms and probably been able to get some real good work. I was going to say, if you don't mind telling some of the bigger names that you sparred. So you said Endom, uh, Sergio Mora. Is there, is there anyone else? Yeah, a there? couple guys at Wild Card. Okay. Uh, Chris Van Heerden, I believe he just won – a belt at 147 is a South African guy. Okay. Um, a few more I just can't think of right now. Okay. It's been all over though. All right. Over. Yeah, I bet this is like a perfect area yeah, for for yeah. boxing, man, to get some good work. What about you? Ever you ever go to the gyms in Vegas at all? Um, I think I've been to Floyd. We've been to Floyd's gym one time, but mm -hmm. I didn't get any work out there. Matter of fact, okay. yeah, I did. Um, but I, and I didn't spar him at Floyd's gym. I think I sparred with him at the Hit Factory. Okay. Yeah. And he was with Mayweather no, Project? That, yeah, it was Badu. Oh, yeah, yeah. Badu, yeah. So I ended up uh -huh. sparring with him a long, long time ago. How was that? It was good. It was great. It was good work? You know? Yeah, good mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a champion now, isn't he? Yeah, he, I think mm -hmm. he just won the WBC Super Middleweight Championship. Uh-huh. All right. So um, can you tell me a little, about, a little bit about your trainer. You know, who is he and how long you guys been working together? Um, so right now I'm working with um, Dion Brewster and, and, um, and Lehman Brewster. So... Uh, and Dave Yonko, he's one of them. So I got like a team. You know? Okay. I just don't have like one That's trainer. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So I, we got, I got a team of people. And, mm -hmm. um, I, we, I just started working with um, Dion more uh, frequently because Lane has been out of town. So I've been working with Dion more. Mm -hmm. And um, my main trainer, David Yonko, he's been, you know, he's always here. We're always working. And, uh, but before them, I was trained. I started with, at Williams Boxing Gym. Uh, Jeremy Williams, that I don't know if you heard of him, but he was a, man, I think an Olympic hopeful back in the 90s. And he, he, did, he did good in the pros, like in the early 2000s or something like that. Like, it was, it was a while back, but, you know, mm -hmm. um, I started with his – and this in this building actually was actually Williams at the time, uh -huh. and then um, after that I trained. I had a different coach. His name was Jesse White, and then now I'm with uh, Dion and Layman and them. So tell me a little bit about your team. Like, what's what's their style overall? Like, what what do you think like is their best qualities as as coaches? Um, you can you can go individually or just as, a, as, a, group. as a group. You know, uh -huh. they all they all they all listen, and no one's too proud to take advice from the from the next guy you know they all listen to each other and you know if there's dis a disagreement about something they bring it up mm -hmm. so we're always work constantly working on something and and making adjustments you know because if you stop learning this game then that's the day you're yeah, gonna get the, yeah, caught yeah, exactly <laughs> that's a, yeah. so do you have a strength and conditioning coach as well no i just do that myself okay yeah all right, so what's some of the, some, some of the stuff you do, you know? Well, you know the basics. I, I, of right. course I run and all that, but mm -hmm. a lot of times I like a lot of calisthenics, like push-ups, bar work. Mm -hmm. um, just the ab work. and ab work, mm -hmm. all that stuff, man. I just okay. throw it in. Uh, so I'll do my boxing in the morning maybe and that stuff later on or switch it up, mm -hmm. you know, but I always make sure I do it, you know, especially – my bar work and, and push-ups and all that. Right. And then what about your uh, for your road work? Do you do that in the gym or you do that outside? I, I like to run outside. Mm -hmm. um, so every now and then if I, if I run on a treadmill, I'll do it. But It's kind of boring. Just, yeah, it's boring. And that's how I feel. If I run outside, I got to run back. You know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Treadmill, <laughs> you know? So how many, how many miles are you putting in a week, if you don't um, mind me asking? I would say... 
a maximum, I, I try not to go over 25. Okay. Because um, I'm only fighting no more than six rounds right now. So right. there's no need for me to be running out there like a marathon. So I try, yeah. to, I try to put no more than 20. I like running, so mm -hmm. it's um it's kind of hard for me not to you know go over that thing. So I try to keep it within like two to three miles a day. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then um, I guess... I was looking up your record. I saw, you know, 4-0 and everything. Like, how many rounds? You haven't boxed that many rounds professionally, have you? No. no because you're no stopping one's these one's guys, like, pretty early, huh? Yeah, no one's made it past the second round. Okay. All right. Um, so I've seen you fight once, you know, I was saying before. And just from my observations, like, you're, you're not a one-dimensional fighter at all. Like, even though you have all these knockouts, like, you can do a lot more. Like, I saw you have, like, really good footwork. Um, how would you sum up your style? You know, are you, are you a boxer puncher? Are you a technical fighter, brawler? I mean, you don't really seem to be a brawler because you had, like I said, like you have that that technical aspect as well. So I mean, how how would you describe your style? Well, I well, I started off punching, uh -huh. but um, mm -hmm. so I was more of like you know puncher boxer. But now mm -hmm. that I know, you can't win championships like that. You know, like. Mm -hmm just going out there banging with guys. I, I love to brawl and just bang with guys, but mm -hmm. it's like. Cause you had good defense from what I saw too. Yeah, yeah we, we, we've been working on it. And, and you know, mm -hmm. I'm trying to accept the fact that life goes on after boxing, trying right. to, you know, plan for my future. You know, I'm not going to be young forever. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're really trying to get the defense down and my footwork and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. when it comes to them 12 round fights, I'm not getting hit too much, and we can get him out there early. So that that combination with my just physical power, and I can you know master the timing and finesse and everything, I believe it'll make the sport real easy for me. All right, all right. Um, so and I also saw you know your fights are listed at super middleweight, mm -hmm. but you usually weigh in a little bit under that. I mean, in the future, like you know, when it's time to you know hopefully go for a title, what what weight class would you would you want to campaign at? Uh, middleweight. 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 Uh -huh. yeah, I, I wouldn't drop any lower than junior middleweight, but I'm, okay. I'm aiming for middleweight because mm -hmm. I'm I'm not. So you think you could make 54 if you had to? If I yeah, I could make because I'm mm -hmm. when I'm cutting weight for. I'm only they they label them super middleweight, but we're we're weighing in like 160, no bigger than 164. Yeah. So that's technically like middleweight. Right. Is, um. So. But if I when I start really getting up there, I, the fights will definitely be at middleweight because I'm I'm still walking around at like one like high one sixty, so I'm only dropping oh, okay. a couple pounds for a fight. Oh yeah, yeah. so you'd be okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Um, and then I guess we already talked about this, but uh, you don't have a date yet for your next fight. No, only a month. They said okay. August. That's good. Yeah. So when uh, Heyman and them lets me know when I when they when they, when they give me the date, then I you know I know for sure. Oh, okay. They've been keeping me busy. Oh, yeah, I bet. Mm -hmm. um, in between fights, man, do you go right back to the gym? Do you wait a few weeks? You know, at this stage in your career, like, what do you do, you know? I take a week off. Right. You know, um, <clears throat> I'm not making a, a big weight drop or anything. My mm -hmm. weight's always, like, around fight weight. So mm -hmm. I take a week off of boxing, you know, just to clear my mind and stuff and to focus on the next guy. But I, I still, you know, Keep your body in yeah, shape. Keep my body mm -hmm. in shape. I still work out stuff, but I just take a mental break. Right. Um, because when I fight, I'm more of like, like I can say, yeah, I'm I'm putting it all in there. Mm -hmm. um, I know the fights haven't lasted that long, but because of the, my training mentality and what I do in the gym leading up to the fight is the reason why it don't last that long. You know. Right. Yeah. It's because so, of your hard work. Yeah. Uh -huh. All that hard work. Mm -hmm. And hey, they're short, but they're exciting, man. Yeah. You know, so there's nothing to be ashamed of there. That's that's all good. Um, so you're signed with Al Heyman, I guess. Like, how did how did that you know come about? You know, have you been with him? I guess for all all four of your fights. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I guess they, they spotted me in the amateurs. Um, okay. A buddy of mine knew Sam. Okay. And uh, he kept telling Sam about me, and Sam came to check me out, and mm -hmm. it's been all good since then. Yeah, Sam's a good dude. Yeah. I had a chance to interview him. He's a good dude. Um, so what can boxing fans expect to see from you in the future? Definitely lots of knockouts. And once I get a title, I'm going to hold on to it for a long time and Absolutely. fight whoever wants a piece of it. Mm -hmm. you know? 
All right. Um, so what's your favorite punch or like your go-to combination that you like to throw? Man, I have a lot of go-to combinations. It just depends mm -hmm. on what side he's on. So you got a sneaky uppercut. Like you hurt that guy in the last fight with a yeah, nice uppercut. Um, it all started with, with a body shot. Mm -hmm. um, I was, most of my fights have ended with body shots because uh, a lot of times guys just leave their body open. Yeah. I just take it. You know? mm -hmm. So I just put those shots in there nice and hard. And it sets up those good head shots. So, um, you like the, the hooks? That's what you mean? Yeah, uh, man, it doesn't matter. Hook, uppercut, straight right hand, doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Whatever mm -hmm. he gives me, I'm going to take. Right. Um, I had a, an old mentor of mine. His name was Adolph Pruitt. And he was, a, he was from St. Louis. And he was a, a, lot of, a lot of professional fights and stuff. And he, he, was, a, he was a contender. And he fought for a title a few times, I believe. And he always told me. Kill the body and the head will die. Yep. So, you know. Chavez Sr., that's what he said, too. Mm hmm okay. it's, it's true. You know, mm -hmm. I don't see why people go away from those old school methods. They right, yeah. Because it seems like there's a lot of headhunters out there. Yeah. Because at the gym that I, I just work out at, uh, it's, it's like an amateur boxing gym, I was asking uh, my trainer, like, just kind of like, you know, what, why is there so many headhunters? Like, people aren't going to the body. And he said, no, no, no. Things have just changed, but you need to go to the body. Like yeah. It's, it's yeah, just definitely. an important thing to do, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so is there anything else that you want to share with fans or readers uh, just to get your name out there? Um, well, you can follow me on Instagram at Malcolm underscore McAllister, and my Twitter is the same, um, right. Facebook, whatever. Yep. Uh, I keep all my fights and stuff on there. Mm -hmm. I try to update as much as possible. I'm not that big on social media. Right. But, or consistent. That's, good, that's know, a good thing. Yeah, I keep my, fight, I keep my fights uh, <laughs> uh -huh. up to date at least. Mm -hmm. I try to. And that's McAllister with two L's, just yes. so everybody gets confused. All right, cool, man. Well, I appreciate your time today, man. Appreciate it a lot. Look forward to seeing more from your career. Thanks for coming. So right. today, I know, you know you're still young in your career, but if there's anyone that you could, you know, like, if you had the opportunity to fight somebody, you know, your next fight, somebody big, you know, possibly for a title, who would you want to fight? Um, shoot, man. I would definitely want to fight like Cotto or Triple G. Mm -hmm. You know, I think more Triple G. Right. Because he's, you know, the up and coming champion right now. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely like to fight him because he's a big puncher and I'm a big puncher. And Fireworks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Very good.